If you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you. In 1998, the only way to make some crazy money, crazy fast, was to either A, open a brothel, or B, play the innovative smash arcade hit, Crazy Taxi. Never before had an arcade racing game combined real-world locations with fast-paced, adrenaline-fueled action. What famous animated series was taken to court by Sega over a copyright dispute on this game? What original destinations were included in the game but had to be removed? So start your engines and let's make some crazy money. Because this is the history of Crazy Taxi. The year is 1997 and Sega game designer Kenji Kano was stuck in a traffic jam. The cars were gridlocked as far as the eye could see looking both forwards and backwards. In the opposite lane though, it was clear with nary a car in sight and Mr. Kano fantasized about jumping the guardrail with his car and driving like a maniac without a care in the world. He was always a car aficionado and especially enjoyed the big Hollywood movies that featured fancy vehicles and high-speed chases. As he sat there fantasizing, the idea for Crazy Taxi popped into his head. He wanted his game to take place in the real-world locations and opted first for Chicago, thanks to the crazy car chase scenes in the Blues Brothers movie. After a colleague mentioned San Francisco with its dips and hills all throughout the city, he decided to use that locale instead. Although the game is intended as an action piece, it's also a rhythm game. Mr. Kano had the music already established first and then had the designers go away and make the game based around the music to create the proper flow and tempo. When designing the game, Mr. Kano opted to use the Sega Naomi board which was a successor to the Sega Model 3 board. The Naomi board would host a number of hit arcade games including Virtua Tennis. Dead or Alive and Get Bass 2. The hardware was very similar to the upcoming Sega console, the Dreamcast, but more on that later. Crazy Taxi was unleashed by Sega into the arcades in 1998. Who would have thought that a game based on taxi driving would be so addictive and so fun? You start out by selecting one of four cabbies, each one with a unique personality. The gameplay is simple. Pick up customers and drive them as fast as you can to their destinations. Although the destination of each passenger is secret until you pick them up, there are different colors associated with each one. A quick trip will award you with a few extra seconds while longer trips will pay you more. The faster you get the customer to his destination, the more potentially you could make and earn extra seconds on the clock. If you take too long, not only will you lose money, but also precious seconds will be deducted from your game time. There are a few maneuvers, such as the Crazy Boost, which lets you take off super fast immediately, and also the Crazy Drift. Using these will get you extra bonus cash when you drop the customers off. One very cool aspect that was ahead of its time was the game using real-world destinations such as Burger King, KFC, and Tower Records among others. Originally, the game was to include McDonald's and Toys R Us, but the deal fell through at the last minute so they had to be removed. Along with the fast-paced addictive gameplay was the music. Tunes from Bad Religion, Offspring, and Methods of Mayhem belted out the giant speakers. Unfortunately, I can't give an example, otherwise I would get a copyright strike, so if you're curious, just do a Google search for it. The game was a massive success when it was released. Players fell in love with the silky smooth graphics and the silky smooth gameplay. On September 9th, 1999, Sega released its Dreamcast console. The Dreamcast was similar in design to the Sega Naomi arcade hardware, except it only offered half of the RAM. 
The developers of the crazy taxi conversion had to figure out a way to stream data from the disk, but they succeeded because the port is virtually indistinguishable. The game runs at 60 frames per second and includes a lot of extras not found in the arcade game. It includes an original mode which features an all new city as well as Crazy Box, which has a series of mini games including this YouTuber's favorite, a bowling mini game. Not only was it a critical success, but the public gobbled it up with the game selling over 1 million units. Almost a year later, Sega announced that they were exiting the hardware business and decided to license their IPs to other companies. This meant that Crazy Taxi would go on to appear on the PlayStation 2, Xbox, PC, and GameCube. These were all competent conversions aside from a few issues with clipping and speed of the gameplay. The Dreamcast port is still the best home version on the market. In 2001, Crazy Taxi 2 was released for the Sega Dreamcast. This was the last Crazy Taxi game to be released for the system. This time, the game takes place in a brand new city loosely based on New York. The game features four brand new drivers along with the original four, bringing the total up to eight. Gameplay is very similar to the first one, aside from a new maneuver called the Crazy Hop, which allows you to jump, making it useful for jumping between skyscrapers. You can also carry up to four customers at once. Instead of the Crazy Box found in the original Dreamcast version, this included the Crazy Pyramid with all new minigames. In 2002, Crazy Taxi 3 High Roller was released for the Xbox and Windows. This game contained three locations which would be the West Coast or San Francisco, Small Apple or New York City, and finally Glitter Oasis or Las Vegas. The original plan for this game was to feature online multiplayer but unfortunately, they had to abandon it due to sync issues. Four brand new drivers were introduced, bringing the total up to 12. A whole new set of minigames were included in the Crazy X mode. This was also released as an arcade cabinet in 2003. In 2003, the first portable version of Crazy Taxi was released for... The Game Boy Advance? It absolutely was! And to be honest, it's not a bad port considering the hardware. The game featured 3D graphics, voices, the arcade mode, and Crazy Box with all of its minigames. The frame rate is a bit sluggish, but at the time, this was the best option you had if you wanted to take Crazy Taxi on the road with you. Also in 2003, Sega laid the smack down on Electronic Arts, Fox Interactive, and Radical Entertainment with a patent infringement lawsuit. The lawsuit claimed that the game Simpsons Road Rage was far too similar to Crazy Taxi. And to be honest, it was. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a huge Simpsons fan, and this game was a blatant ripoff. But it was also really well done. It wasn't just a cheap cash-in. It felt like discovering a lost episode with brand new cutscenes and all new voiceover work. Plus, this game was really fun. The lawsuit was eventually settled out of court. In 2007, the first proper portable Crazy Taxi game was released on the PSP titled Crazy Taxi Fair Wars. This is a compilation of the first two games that also featured for the first time multiplayer modes. This is a really well done port but the only downside is that the game removes all licensed destinations as well as the licensed music. The game was eventually released on the Xbox 360 and PS3 and gave the option for custom soundtracks, which meant you could include any type of music you wanted. In 2014, Crazy Taxi City Rush was released for the iOS and Android platforms. This is essentially an endless runner, but was designed by Mr. Kano, so at least in spirit, it remains faithful to the original Crazy Taxi. Besides just making money, the game gives you multiple tasks to complete, which extends the life of the gameplay. Another feature that was added was the inclusion of the original Orange Goblin himself, 
the immoral Hulk Hogan. Listen up, Hulkamaniacs! I'm taking over Crazy Taxi, City Rush, for an entire month! Special Hulk commissions all over the city! Custom Hulkamania gear for you and your cab! You can even hire me to drive your taxi! It's not only party time, it's Hulkamania time, brother! So what you gonna do when the power of Hulkamania runs wild on Crazy Taxi, City Rush, and you? Crazy Taxi was an innovative arcade racer. It took a mundane job such as taxi driving and turned it into one of the most enjoyable, addictive arcade driving games on the market. It has that just one more game addictive quality to it, which is hard to come by in newer games. If you are a fan of driving games that have never tried this one out, be sure to check it out. You'll be glad you did. If you like my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my little channel can grow. Thank you for watching.